So today I'm going to show you guys how my Friday nights go. How to move that car right there so we can get my buddy's S13 in here. Swap the subframe bushings out for solids. Swap his open diff out for a uh, welded diff. So I got the exhaust off, I got the drive line hanging, I got the caliper hanging, I'll just fish it through once we're ready to drop it. I think it's ready to drop, I just got the, the couple, the three bolts right here for the front of the subframe, the one bolt back here for the back of the subframe on both sides and everything else is done. The shocks off, I got the drive line off, got the exhaust off. And for the e-brake, there are two at the top of the subframe. Don't forget those if you're trying to do this. <clears throat> I got the calipers off, so I'm gonna screw around with re-bleeding it once I'm done. And the e-brake cable, I don't have to mess around with getting that off, so that's no fun. Yeah, so pretty much ready to drop it. Just gotta pull the bolts off, get a jack under here. I got an ATV jack that I'm going to use for, it, it just centers it better. So ATV jack is the way to do it. So that's probably what I'm gonna do is get that under here and, <clears throat> and, and get those subframe bolts off and drop this thing. Got it out. You happy? Hell yeah. Once we can get these freaking burned out of here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You excited for solids? Hell yeah. Just burning out the subframe bushings. Daisy's having a little bit too much fun here. That's starting fluid if, <laughs> if you wanted to know what we were using. Some people say to use torches. I don't know, the starting fluid works pretty good. All right, so I got them all out. Just tap them out with a punch and a hammer. I cut a slice in them with the Sawzall before, just so that when when they come out, they have a, like they their tension was released. They come out easier. But now we gotta tap the these aluminum ones in solid. So I got that one in and that one in. But to get these two bottom ones, I'm gonna have to take those arms up, swivel them up because I can't get a good swing on the hammer. So what I've just been doing is I just put the put just just set it on here and then put the block of wood over it and then just hammer with a, a sledge, mini sledge, and just hammer the crap out of it until it gets started and then go around it, beating it. It's 
how you do it they look so good together so it's like midnight um, we went to eat and once we got back I was kind of just tired and didn't really want to do anything so sat down watch watch some YouTube Casey fell asleep and it's about 12 now and I came back out here and was playing around a little bit I got the diff out it's chilling all the bolts there um, this diff uh, the silicone is still drying the RTV is still drying so I didn't really want to put oil in it quite yet I was going to slap it in but uh, I was just like I don't want to take a chance that it's not going to seal good so I'm just going to wait until the morning come out here make sure that that's not tacky anymore throw some fluid in it throw it in the subframe and uh, get the subframe back in the car so so we can go rip it got the diff all uh, filled up so uh, it should be ready to get put in the subframe and then we'll put the subframe in the car Got the dip in, got all the axle bolts on, the back four, and the front two. <clears throat> uh, his camper arms weren't even like locked down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten them up so that they don't come loose. So, that's what we're doing right now. All right, so we got it all together. Got the camper. Uh, tight. Got it just sitting on some blocks so it's angled downward a little bit. You can see it's angled a little bit down because the car is on jack stands. You go up in there pretty evenly. So, uh, yeah, we get after it. Got them started. There's still a little bit of room. That's where they're tightening up, and then since they're solid, a bitch to get them to go much further so um, I got enough for the the nuts to go on and now I'm just gonna hit them with the impact a few times see if I can evenly get them to move up so so I'm kind of pissed this freaking thing got hung up so much that it stripped out the threads the bottom hopefully I can save them with a with a die hopefully hopefully they'll I can still get some threads out of it and put a, a new nut on that but this one this corner is just struggling to go up so I'm just gonna tap it with a, a sledge the rest of the way up so that the threads don't have any type of pressure on them so what I've done is I just ran a die up on it, redid the threads, and then uh, I got a lock nut with some washers instead of um, that plate, that stupid plate. I just did some washers, so I like that better. And then I hammered it up instead of actually using the threads to get the subframe up the rest of the way. So. Now I'll just tighten that nut down and it should be golden. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side because the other side looks to be the same deal. And I don't want to take the plate off the other side just so it matches. But I had to beat the crap out of it to get it up there. You can see my freaking marks from the mini sledge. I don't even know what the hell he's doing. Sealing tail light. Sealing his tail lights so they don't leak, I guess. So they don't take on water. They don't fill up with water, I guess. I don't know. 50-50 tail problems. Found a screw in his tire. He's just screwing around and looking at offsets and stuff, playing around with different wheels. I think he should get the Cosmos 
racing wheels, the deep dish like RPF1 looking ones, but he won't tell me if he wants those or not. Maybe. 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 But Okay, so I get the subframe all bolted down. It's all the way up on the frame. <clears throat> it's all the way up against the frame on all four corners. Just got to put the rotors on, put the calipers on, put the drive line on, the exhaust. coils, the exhaust, um, the wheels and tires. Well, the wheels, and we should be good. Should be ready to go. All right, so I have the drive line on now. I got the calipers on. I got the top two bolts for the e-brake lines. Um, pretty much the only thing left is the crappy sounding exhaust that Casey has and bolt the coils um, in. Oh yeah, we gotta bolt the coils, but that's easy. And put the wheels on. And we should be should be done. You happy? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah? Then, then test drive time. And then yeah, we'll go do a couple skids, right? Maybe. Shit. Well, I got his exhaust on. And uh, it's basically held on by those two bolts to the downpipe. And then there's two more bolts back there. And uh, the rest is just like, like, this was just zip tied right here. The backs are just zip tied. Everything's just zip tied. I don't know who like made this exhaust, but like if you look up here, just zip ties, bro. Just zip ties. That's all it's holding it. Look, more zip ties. I guess that's what these 240s are held together by nowadays. I'll give you a good shot of it. Looks pretty good with the 5050s. My car looking good. My other car looks like crap. Got her on the ground, all finished. Got some Z32 wheels on the back because the, uh, this tire's got some screws in it. So, yeah, we gotta move my crap out of the way so he can get his crap out. Casey here is going to do a burnout. What the fuck? Rev it up more and drop the clutch.